Okay, so we want to start, we want to understand a little bit about thermodynamics. And this is a, I mean, I'm not going to lie, it's a tough topic. And sometimes, you know, thermodynamics is just taught about steam engines and heat engines and things. And that that's fantastically important, actually, but it's not always the... The most engaging way to start things off, and, and I mean, I, I, f I find myself when I'm trying to understand um, any topic, actually, I, I, I want to relate it to something, um, to something that that I can kind of make sense. I can make sense of in my head. I can all, I can picture um, things. So often, mechanical analogies help, and, and so I wanted to start off with an, an energy example and. and use that to introduce uh, this concept of the internal energy which is quite quite important in, in thermodynamics so the mechanical analogy that you know our, our brains as, as humans we, we try to think about things in, in terms of classical mechanics often they're, they're thing, things that behave the way we expect them to in, in everyday life and so you can think about a, a mass you know say a certain distance above the ground and um, you know, you you may know that that would have a certain uh, potential energy uh, that you know that is it's it's being it's being acted on by 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 gravity, and so the the potential energy at that height h is going to be equal to that mass times the acceleration due to gravity times the height mgh, and that would be in in units so it has energy units of of joules, and so that mechanical energy probably makes a, a, um, a fair amount of sense to uh, to most of us um, you know if you raise it to a higher height there would be more potential energy you drop a coffee mug from a, a low height uh, let's see if I can draw a coffee mug huh? does that look like a coffee mug from a <laughs> from a small height uh, you know versus a large height uh, well I won't make you suffer through the coffee mug being drawn twice but if I was to ask you you know if your prized coffee mug and which one would you prefer which height would you prefer I drop it through onto a concrete surface you'd tell me well this, I love that coffee mug go for H1 because there's less energy that's going to be involved in that impact so hopefully this mechanical analogy uh, makes a bit of sense what, what's um, what's important about this analogy or there's a few takeaways that I think will help to, to make some solid sense of, of thermodynamics and this idea of the internal energy is um, first of all this potential energy this one's actually maybe it's not obvious but the potential energy um, it doesn't depend on how we got to that height the potential energy here mgh depends only on the mass, the gravity, and the height. And so, if we assume the mass and gravity are, are fixed, you know, neglecting changes in gra the acceleration due to gravity in different altitudes and, and stuff, then the height's the only only variable there, and it doesn't matter how we arrive at that energy. Um, for example, so if I elaborate on this, what, what's going to be my first point here? If I if I drew for you. Um, say five different steps and it's almost like a cartoon here where I took that same mass M and then um, what I do I moved it up okay that's supposed to be you know, some velocity or whatever it doesn't really matter it's just moving that's the movement of that mass it goes up okay so then um, in the next frame here of our little cartoon it's uh, it's higher and, and then so then I bring it down and now it's uh, sitting down here and what the heck maybe I, I excuse me uh, I move it to, to the side uh, okay no big deal um, and so then there's our block it's moved over a little bit to the right and I want to return it to the same condition that we have it in actually up here okay so I, I move it over uh, a little bit to the left and up on that diagonal and we, we, we arrive at this case here where the the block is this this height that I defined as um, height h. I'll use the same color scheme here. Um, 
in the first case, you know, we could even be specific. Let's say call that h sub zero h naught. Uh, then this case here, which we could call say call that case one, and this being here case two, which we arrived at through these series of 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 steps. It doesn't matter. It is, well, the case two is, is identical to case one. It's independent of the path we took to get it there. So we have a name for that, um, and, and we call it, we see the potential energy is a state function. It's a state function. It's a function only of the state, independent of the path it took. So you, know, you climb up a mountain, this is the example that's often given, and you go straight up, or you zigzag back and forth, or you loop around the mountain, the height that you get to at the end is a state function. Uh, it doesn't matter how long you took to get there, or what path you took, um, the the height, the altitude that you achieve at the end um, is, is the same. So by contrast here, it's, a state function is not uh, a path function. Okay, work, the amount of energy it took to do this series of one, two, three, four, five steps actually was more than, say, just raising the mass to that height. Uh, but that path, that the energy required to do that is, is a path function, but the final state in terms of the potential energy is independent of how you got there. So, so that's the first point I'm trying to make here. And the second point, which is probably a little more obvious, is the potential energy it has to be, it's relative. So that means we take some, um, some, some, we're, we're measuring the height against, we're taking some, some uh, basis, right? This height here of the floor. But maybe that was actually the height above a desk. And we're interested in the potential energy for the mass to fall to the desk. But maybe the floor exists down here at, a, at another height. Well, then the potential energy uh, from the box, that mass, to the floor, say that's the floor, is more than to the desk. Okay. Another example, um, another way I could illustrate this would be, let's see if I can, I can draw a beautiful, beautiful sketch for you here. Okay, ready for this? So let's see here. Let's see if you can identify what I'm drawing here. With my fantastic artistic abilities. Can you see what that is yet? Huh? Look at there's a window. Maybe I could draw some other windows here along the fuselage. Okay, this is it's an aircraft, isn't it? <laughs> so I, I I hope that you can you can tell that I'm I'm trying as as best I can to draw an aircraft, and so that aircraft is flying through the air. Okay, it's so zipping along through the air as the aircraft do, and I'm gonna do a little call out here. So I'm gonna say what what's going on inside the aircraft? Well, inside the aircraft, lo and behold. Someone has a mass, and they're holding it above the floor of the aircraft, and they're holding it a height of, you know, we're just going to call it h, okay, above the ground of the aircraft, and, and you want to calculate the potential energy of that that box, that mass. Well, you, you know, you you calculate that mass relative to the floor of the aircraft, or relative to the surface of the Earth. You know, that's another. Uh, height substantially larger than the height above the floor inside the aircraft. Call that I don't know h2, and so potential energy is relative. Uh, I mean, in fact, we could take this another step uh, further, and, and well, actually, this 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 mass has a, a velocity to it, doesn't it? It's I mean, the aircraft has a velocity; it's moving along some velocity. So the mass, actually, I mean, relative to the the ground, has a has that same velocity. But if you're inside the aircraft, you probably wouldn't be concerned with that. So there, there's elements of the energy that you might be interested in and elements that you're not. In fact, you know, if you were to burn that box, say it was a, a block, block of wood, you could release some energy from it that way. But if you're talking about potential energy in terms of the height only, you wouldn't be interested in what happens if you burn it. So when I say, I'm trying to make a broad statement here, the potential energy is relative, and it's relative to many things, a height, um, it's, it depends on, in fact, what the particular problem is that you're considering. 
So, a, a similar extension of that discussion of, of potential energy being relative is this result that, say, okay, now I'll tell you what I'm trying to draw. I'm trying to draw a table. All right, it's, it's a, apparently a very thin table. I'll give it some height. There you go. Okay, and, you know, if I positioned, uh, if you have a kid, kids, I mean, you're probably younger than me, so maybe you don't have kids, but eventually you'll look back on this and think, oh, yeah, I knew what Ramsey was talking about. So say there's some water in a cup, and, and kids often like, love to just put the cup of water right on the edge of the of the table, and, and your only interest is in the fact that there may be a change in potential energy. I mean, of course, you're not going to articulate it that way, but you know that that might fall down. All you really care about is that it's going to have this positive change um, in, in energy, right? Um, and, in fact, the specific value of the potential energy here is not really so interesting to you rather than just the, the direction of the change and that it's going to it's going to move down there that's going to result in a decrease in energy and so that's going to be a favorable action for, for that glass to have so we're interested in changes in in energy and um got to remember that uh potential energy is, is a state function so how does that tie into thermodynamics well say we have now some arbitrary uh system Okay, some uh, quantity of material with, with a boundary that we're interested in. Um, okay, well, we could, uh, I'm sorry, we would define everything outside of that system uh, as the surroundings. These are some terms that you'll encounter. Um, and the boundary, you can have different boundaries that either permit heat through uh, or per permit matter to be tra transmitted. You can have a movable boundary like a piston or something. There's all these things that you consider. But there's a quantity of material that we're interested in. Um, say I'll give you something a little more tangible. Say it's it's a beaker. Okay, here's my best attempt at a beaker. And so, say so you've got this beaker, and what's in the beaker? Uh, well. Let's say you've got you know some some liquid, and in fact let's let's be a little more specific. Well, maybe it's it's gasoline, okay? And you're interested in combusting it, okay? And you want to know how much energy you could achieve by combusting that that um, gasoline, or or perhaps you've you've got that full of uh, Water. I'll make it blue because everyone knows water looks blue. <laughs> um, and well, not really, but um, often it does when you got enough of it. And you know, maybe you want to know if it's going to freeze, right? Or say you've got uh, I don't know, you've got a quantity of getting a little bit vague here, but of carbon, and you know, you want to know is it going to form diamond? Maybe you want to form some synthetic diamond, or maybe you want it to form graphite. You know, if you're taking notes with a pencil, you're using some graphite. You know what? What we're we're looking at here is some basically. Um, I mean, this is the the crux of thermodynamics, and, and one of the important steps to this is is understanding the internal energy, um, and and determining you know starting and endpoints. Um, so if we wanted to 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 study any of these these things here, one of the um, important first steps we have to make is in establishing the energy embodied in, in that particular system. What's that energy? <clears throat> and so what we do is we actually define this um, uh, quantity we, that we call the internal energy. Okay, and the analogy I'm trying to make in this video is for you to Kind of take this classical mechanical example here of a, of a mass and potential energy, right? And I'll scroll back down here and extend it out to okay, we got internal energy that just has some similarities. Um, unfortunately, there's a bit of a bizarre symbol that's used. Uh, it's the big capital letter U that's used for internal energy. 
And internal energy um, accounts for all the energy uh, in, in the system, but similar to potential energy, um, there's, there's a couple of things. Uh, well, first of all, it's a state function, okay? So however you arrive at that particular state of internal energy, doesn't matter how you got there, it's independent of the path. And the other thing that's important is we're really interested um, in, in, in changes. Okay, that's what is actually really most interesting. In fact, you can't really entirely quantify the internal energy because what's included in internal energy, and often again our brains try to make sense of this, you, you really want to know what is accounting for the internal energy and the thing that's a little hard to accept at first is that it doesn't actually doesn't actually matter really what that internal energy is comprised of. In fact, a lot of thermodynamics, um, um, traditional uh, thermodynamics, it doesn't even you don't even have to believe in the atom for 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 the um, principles and the equations and laws to, to work out. So what the internal energy is is, is kind of immaterial. It doesn't really matter. It could be um, chemical energy between a couple of atoms. It could be rotational energy. Um, it could be uh, vibrational energy. Uh, say you've got a, a solid, um, you know, in some kind of a crystal, right? We've studied studied that in this course. So there could be many, many elements to this. In fact, I mean, you could look at the, the what if you, you drill down into the atom there and look at the, the energy between a proton and a, and a neutron. Okay, that's a horrible sketch of a proton and a neutron, but it's, you, know, you guys can get some nuclear energy. Uh, I mean, typically in, in chemistry, you wouldn't account for that because that's not something you're interested in, right? So the internal energy doesn't really matter so much physically what what it comes from but changes in it and the fact that it's a state function are, are important and so in fact we can make this this statement here that the internal energy or, or changes to the internal energy for um, an isolated system an isolated system means that it's these boundaries that I talked about earlier here are not going to permit energy through and they're not going to permit matter through. So if you've got a system that's isolated like that, there will be no change in internal energy. And in fact, that that statement right there is the the first law of of thermodynamics. Now you you'll see it written and expressed in many different ways. Energy cannot be created; it's only converted to different forms, and, and so on. But really, the, the, this is the, the crux of it. Um, sometimes it's it's also written. I'll show you another way of thinking of it: um, that change in internal energy uh, for a system. Now, now we're getting a little more general, rather than my isolated system that I, I described here. You could say the change in energy um, would be equal to the heat exchanged with that system. Right, you put some energy in, you can increase the internal energy, heat exchanged, sorry, um, plus the work done um, on the system. Right, on the system. So that's another statement of the first law. Um, and uh, the work, you know, work done. This would be, you know, if you had a movable boundary, you change the volume um, of it, uh, for example. All right. So that's a little intro. Sorry, it went a little long, but I, I hope that that was um, a useful introduction to a rather challenging topic.